Hello everybody, and welcome to Historic Subjects. Today we are looking into the story of a man named Totomu Yamaguchi, who somehow survived being bombed twice a couple of days apart. These weren't just any bombs though, these were nuclear bombs. The date is August 6th, 1945. Japanese marine engineer Totomu Yamaguchi is preparing to head back home to his family in Nagasaki after completing a three month long business trip designing oil tankers in Hiroshima for his employer Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Mr Yamaguchi was on the bus with two colleagues Akira Awanaga and Kuniyoshi Sato heading towards the shipyard when he realised that he had forgotten his hanko. This is a personal ID stamp which is common in Japan. He left his two colleagues and returned to the company dormitory to collect his stamp. After collecting his hanko he headed back towards the Mitsubishi shipyard. At around 8.15am, Mr Yamaguchi looked up into the clear sky to see a B-29 Super Fortress bomber and two parachutes which the aircraft had released. As he watched the two parachutes descend, a flash of light blinded him and he was thrown to the ground. He retold his account in an interview in 2005 in which he said, It was a flat open spot with potato fields on either side. It was very clear, a really fine day, nothing unusual about it at all. I was in good spirits. As I was walking along, I heard the sound of a plane just one. I looked up into the sky and saw the B-29 and it dropped two parachutes. I was looking up at them and then suddenly it was like a flash of magnesium, a great flash in the sky and I was blown over. The city of Hiroshima had just become the victim of the first atomic bomb to be dropped during warfare. The bomb, codenamed Little Boy, was dropped by the American Air Force using a Boeing B-29 Super Fortress bomber called Enola Gate. Somehow, Yamaguchi survived even though he was only approximately two miles away from ground zero. When Mr Yamaguchi was tossed to the ground, he lost consciousness for a while. When he awoke, he was unable to see much of anything. The blast had thrown so much dust and debris into the air that it blocked out the sun. In the same 2005 interview, he said, When the noise and the blast had subsided, I saw a huge mushroom-shaped pillar of fire rising up high into the sky. It was like a tornado although it didn't move, but it rose and spread out horizontally at the top. There was a prismatic light, which was changing in a complicated rhythm, like the patterns of a kaleidoscope. When he came to his senses, he checked to see if he still had his legs, and if he could move them. At this point, he knew the best thing to do was to get moving. So burned and stunned by the event that had just unfolded, he managed to get himself to an air raid shelter, 200 yards from where he was. Here, he discovered the extent of his injuries, he found that both of his eardrums had been ruptured and he was badly burned on his face and forearms from the radiation. A couple of hours had passed and Yamiguchi decided to head out towards a shipyard where he found both of his colleagues that he had left earlier that morning. They too had somehow survived and all three men spent the night in another air raid shelter. After a sleepless night, on the morning of August 7th, they made their arduous journey across a devastated Hiroshima, towards the west of the city, where one train station was unbelievably still operational. All three men, Yamaguchi, Awanaga and Sato, had to endure the human suffering that had been left behind by the bombing. In another interview, Mr Awanaga said, There were some things I couldn't look at. Internal organs hanging out, the tongue or the eyes hanging loose. If you have a normal set of nerves, it's very difficult to look at something like that. On the way to the train station, they were confronted by a river where the bridge to the other side had been destroyed, and their only option was to wade through the water which was filled with corpses. When the three men eventually reached the station, they all boarded an overnight train to their hometown of Nagasaki. Upon arriving in Nagasaki on the morning of August 8th, Yamaguchi went straight to the hospital to get treatment for his burns. The hospital bandaged him up and he returned home to his family, when he returned home, his family barely recognised him, due to the number of bandages he was covered in. Unbelievably, Totomu Yamaguchi returned to work the next day on August the 9th. Upon returning, his boss questions his sanity, for believing one bomb could do so much damage to a city the size of Hiroshima. And whilst discussing the subject, at around 11am, Yamaguchi once again witnessed a flash of light. He dropped to the floor a few seconds before the shockwave shattered the office windows, which sent broken glass and debris flying around the room. A second bomb, codenamed Fatman, had just been dropped on Nagasaki, by another Boeing B-29 Super Fortress bomber named Boxcar. This bomb's primary target was another Japanese city called Kokura, but eventually a decision was made to drop the explosive on the secondary target, Nagasaki. Yamaguchi's bandages were blown off during the blast, and somehow only had minor injuries on top of the ones he had suffered in Hiroshima. He made his way back home again and feared the worst, but fortunately he returned home to find his wife Hisako and his baby son, Katsutoshi, had thankfully survived only sustaining scratches and bruises. He and his family went round the back of their ruined house to a shelter where, after a double dose of radiation exposure, Totomu Yamaguchi's health took a turn for the worse. The wounds on his arms turned gangrenous, his hair fell out, 
and he began to throw up constantly. Unlike many of the other victims of radiation exposure, he steadily began to recover and went on to live a relatively normal life, and even served as a translator for the US Armed Forces during the occupation of Japan. He later became a teacher, before eventually returning to his engineering career at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Totomo Yamaguchi would deal with horrific experiences in both Hiroshima and Nagasaki by writing poetry. These poems would be made into a book in 2010, called And the River Flood as a Raft of Corpses. Totomo and Hisako, who already had a son, would have two more children during the late 1940s. Both were girls. Neither child was born with any birth defects. However, both girls were more prone to illness than others. Despite this, the Yamaguchis lived relatively healthy lives. Both girls are still alive today, as far as I can tell from the information I could find. However, his son, Katsutoshi, died in 2005 at the age of 59 from cancer. Hisako, his wife, died in 2008 at the age of 88 from liver and kidney cancer. Even though Totomu survived both atomic blasts along with 165 other people, he wasn't officially recognised as Hibakusha or Twice Bond until 2009, and he's the only person to be recognised officially as a survivor of both bombings by the Japanese government. At first, Yamaguchi didn't feel like it was necessary to bring attention to his status as a double survivor, but as he got older, his feelings changed. He is quoted as saying, My double radiation exposure is now official government record. I can tell the younger generation the horrifying story of the atomic bombings even after I die. In 2009, Totomu Yamaguchi learned he was dying of stomach cancer, and on the 4th of January 2010, he passed away in Nagasaki at the age of 93. That is the end of today's story. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please leave your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. If you liked what you saw today, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.